Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. And a very special shout out to my super thanks contributor at James Rivet. And because he has contributed $20 or more, he has chosen to do a custom video. And his choice is a rail mounted traction engine. And a quick reminder that if you would like a custom video done such as this one, all you have to do is hit the super thanks button, which is close to the like button on the taskbar, and you contribute $20 toward the channel's efforts, and you go to the comments, and you tell me what you want done, and I do it as a priority over any other project that I am doing. And with that, let's get on with the video. Enjoy. So in and around 1865, the Avalon and Porter uh, Company in the UK built several small shunting uh, tram locomotives based on their traction engines. They were basically traction engines with flanged wheels and no steering. Their advantages were that they were cheap to manufacture and to design in the first place, and they could be operated with minimum training by someone who was familiar with traction engines. So prior to 1868, Royal Engineers had been experimenting with uh, steam traction engines. Early examples had used modified railroad locomotives mounted on a variety of wheels to transverse soft lands. The locomotives were far too heavy to be effective, and on one occasion they even broke through the road near the Royal Arsenal in Woolwich into cellars uh, down below. With the development of a relatively lightweight traction engine specifically for road use, the Royal Engineers turned their attention to those. The first steam sapper was ordered by the Avalon and Porter in 1868. Steam sapper number one was required to operate a 36 inch circular saw, grindstone, lathe, and joiner, as well as drawing five tons up to one in 12 slope. It performed this, but it was more than a quarter of a ton over the specified maximum weight of five tons. So to give you all an idea, this type of steam engine was used to basically pull uh, military artillery, um, anything mil military associated that uh, was heavy hauling. And basically, um, they also used them on uh, railways to basically pull something uh, quickly rather than dragging up a locomotive to do the same, um, etc. So I suppose you would say that here in America, we, we, uh, in nowadays, we would call them basically pickup trucks. So that was an example of how these steam sappers were used on a general roadway. So also, some of the steam sappers were fitted with railway wheels. Yeatman records that steam sappers numbers 3 to 7 as being 220T locomotives on the Lodge Hill and Upnor Railway. An additional record uh, called Nowers states that sapper number 9 was fitted with railway wheels for a trial that sapper number 12 was purchased with them. In 1873, the preparations for the Ashton T expedition, it is recorded a second locomotive called a steam sapper arrived at Woolwich yesterday from Chatham, accompanied by several wagons to form a train, either for running upon rails or common roads. Both engine and wagons being provided with flanged wheels for use if necessary on railways. One of the two steam sappers planned to go to Ashanti was not shipped and in October of 1874 there's an account of a steam sapper propelling three Ashanti rail trucks containing dignitaries during an artillery demonstration in Eastbourne. Sapper number 24 was the last Aveline and Porter engine to be called a steam sapper. It was used by the newly formed Balloon Corporation in 1885. The locomotive and another one ordered shortly afterwards were used to haul balloon trains. Each train consisted of five wagons carrying gas cylinders, a water cart, and a wagon for the balloon, basket, and winch. Used as a military application, balloons were normally employed as elevated observation platforms and as such were tethered through observers who were trained in how to handle free flight in case the balloons broke away. Avalon and Porter engines continued to be purchased up until 1899, though losing ground to a follower type. At least one engine saw service in the Boer War and four were still in service in 1906 with the Army Service Corporation which progressively took over responsibility for transport from the Royal Engineers between 1903 and 1906. And of course, we can't talk about steam traction about anything without bringing up diesel traction as well, because, of course, at the steam locomotives, diesel began taking over those operations uh, on the railroads. And the first such diesel engine of this type was the Paxman, and it was installed in a locomotive by a British railway, and that was a six inline six VXS producing 412 BHP at 750 revolutions per minute. 
The engine was one of the first to be built on the Stevens patent with an all-welded steel frame and was mounted on a chassis of an old Johnson 1F060T steam locomotive originally built at the Vulcan Foundry and delivered it in September of 1892 to the Midland Railway where it became number 1999. In 1907, it was renumbered to number 1831. A proposal for its conversion to a diesel hydraulic experimental shunter at an estimated cost of 560, uh, 5,660 5, pounds, and that was dated on October 7th of 1931. In 1933, while experiments were taking place with the number 1831, the LMS decided to carry out extended trials with diesel shunters and placed orders for eight diesel mechanical types, which were delivered in 1934. Four were built by the Hunslet Engine Company of Leeds and four other private locomotive builders. With one exception, all were fitted with different makes of diesel engines, and each had a slightly different transmission arrangement for evaluation purposes. One of the Hunslets, LMS 7054, was powered by Paxman's six-cylinder VZS engine and dispatched from the factory on 13 July of 1934. Cylinder and designed to the 6VXX, installed in LMS 1831, the smaller 6VZS with a rating of 180 bhp at 900 rpms. Transmission was via Vulcan Sinclair hydraulic coupling to a Humphrey Sandberg freewheel and a three-speed gearbox giving speeds of 4, 8, and 13 miles an hour. And some other uses for steam traction engines are basically like steam rollers and steam tractors that were used for general farm work and what have you as well. So many practical applications for a steam traction type of engine. And with that, we'll wrap up the video. If you enjoyed the content on this video, please leave a like. And also, uh, if you've not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button as both features help the channel grow immensely. And don't forget about the super thanks uh, button on the taskbar next to the like button if you want to contribute to the channel's efforts. If you don't want to do it that way, you can always visit our print shop at nickelplatelimited on etsy.com. All contributions are greatly appreciated and will be recognized. And we thank you very much.